There we go. All right, guys, we are here. Happy Monday. Thank you guys for joining us yet again for another fun um, Monday training. Um, Amy and I are super, super excited. We've been loving having these master classes. And um, if you're the one trying to message me, please stop because it's <laughs> dinging noises. <laughs> not me, not me. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Um, so uh, we've been loving having these master classes, and we hope that you guys have been liking them as well and getting some value out of them. We figured since, you know, the geniuses that we are, since it's the end of the month, what better thing to talk about than closing? <laughs> so as we're all trying to kind of go for our own goals and help our team hit um, goals, the topic of closing comes up a whole lot because it seems like this really difficult task to have to do. A lot of fear-driven avoidance of closing, and it really shouldn't be that way. So we're hoping that you guys leave this call tonight empowered um, with some different ideas and a different way to approach it so that you guys can maybe um, it, you have a little bit more success and also transfer that knowledge onto your team and help them as well in those magical three-way chats that we keep talking about. Hey, Suzette. Hey, Katrina. Hey, Nora. Rebecca. Ali. Yay. Okay, so... The first thing I wanted to talk to you guys about, and you'll have to forgive me, I have um, tons of notes on these like tiny little pieces of paper tonight. So this is gonna go really, really well. Um, true life right here. So um, the first thing I wanna talk to you guys about is the servant mentality versus the success mentality. And I think that is the very, very basis of closing. You have to approach it with the right mindset. Um, and what I mean by servant versus success is a servant mentality is when you're making it all about the other person. When you are truly to your core talking to this person, whether it's a teammate, whether it is a, um, you know, a customer or a potential, what have you, no matter who it is that you're talking to, you have got to get in the mindset that this is about them. This isn't about Sarah Taylor's goals, Amy Welch's goals, or anything like that. This isn't about your goals. This isn't about a sale. This isn't about convention contest. This isn't about um, closing the month out, you know, strong, that type of thing. This is, I want to help Rebecca feel better, or I want to help Rebecca have more time with her kids. Like taking yourself and putting it in their shoes and, and approaching it from a perspective of, I want to help this other person and what I'm offering is that answer. So that's the first step. You have to approach each of these conversations with that specific mindset, with that way of thinking, because it it just automatically changes the tone of your conversation, changes how you talk to them, changes the verbiage and the reactions that you have, right? So we can't control what they're gonna say to us, but we can control the reactions that we have to what they say to us, right? And we don't want them, even if they're telling us no, we don't want them leaving that conversation feeling bad and having a bad feeling in their stomach, right? So it's all about that success versus servant mentality. So I wanna talk to you guys a little bit next about closing with compassion. And I can't have this topic of conversation without kind of first talking about the sales process because closing with compassion and, and, and closing with that empathy and that servant mentality that I just talked about instead of the success mentality, it isn't about sales gimmicks. It isn't about um, verbiage and um, scripts or anything like that. It's about truly listening and talking to the other person. It's about truly consulting with them and exactly with that servant mentality, servant leadership, everything like that. It is absolutely about making the other person walk away from the conversation feeling good, feeling heard, um, having felt that you really were empathetic to them and really took time to get to know them and care about them. So that's what this is truly, truly all about. And so a lot of times when we end up struggling with closing, when we end up struggling with um, what words to say and how to take it to the next level, a lot of times it's because maybe our process wasn't the most amazing leading up to when we tried to make that close or maybe our intentions or what we were saying during that close weren't really all about the other person they were more about us right so that icky feeling that you feel like when you're gonna go and try and close somebody 
that's what we're trying to avoid. And I know we've all been there, you guys. I have been there. I've been in sales um, for the majority of my career. So my, my corporate career before Plexus was sales. And I closing first started for me as something that was so, so difficult to do. But once I kind of mastered this mentality, it became something that was very, very second nature. It was natural. It wasn't forced. It just happened. And that's where we're trying to get you guys to lead to. So what you guys need to help to understand is that definitely it begins during the prospecting part of this. So on this page, we have talked so much about sharing your impact statement, sharing your why story, um, being a consultant to the other person. So those are things that before you ever even get to the close, you're closing um, because it's the way that you're talking to the person. It's the way that you are prospecting the person and consulting. So what does that mean? You're sharing your impact statement. You're sharing your why goal. How are you going to, why are you doing this? Why are you even with Plexus? What are you after? What are you trying to help them achieve? And then after that initial time, you're asking them tons and tons of questions. You are being a consultant to them and listening. You are you are leading this conversation via questions and figuring out from them what their goals are. That's your number one priority. You want to figure out not just one goal, like weight loss or something like that, right? You want to find out multiple goals because everybody has kind of multiple goals happening with them. Maybe they want weight loss. Maybe they want um, more time with their kids. Maybe they're not feeling very fulfilled with their job. What are those things? Truly get to know them. Talk to them. And you guys, I am a huge, you guys will hear me talk about this all the time. I'm a huge, and I'm sorry, my kids are crazy loud out in the kitchen right now. Um, but the, the, the biggest thing that you can do in this conversation, I believe, is get on the phone because that's going to make it so much easier to have this conversation. But question after question after question, and then sit back and listen. Don't word vomit plexus on them because how the heck are you going to sell them plexus if you don't even know what they're trying to buy from you? Are they buying an opportunity? Are they buying triplex? Are they buying pain relief? Are they buying migraine relief? Are they buying weight loss? Or are they buying something much bigger than that? You know, the time with their kids, like I mentioned. So really that prospecting becomes your number one key to success. Take notes during that time frame, guys. Um, you wanna figure out, okay, so Amy has a goal staying at home with her kid, right? She has that goal. So that's on my list of things that like, okay, I know that that's what I'm going to try and help her achieve. That's the way I'm steering this conversation. And I'm going to show her how through my conversations with her, how I'm going to help her stay home with her kid. Right. And so the keys to closing is they're not looking for opportunities. They're not looking for a single purchase, like a one-time purchase, right? They are looking for solutions to problems that they have in their life. And you are the person that's providing that solution, but you're going to have to explain that out to them and show them and remind them of their goals over and over again within this conversation. So it really does become an in-depth, um, just, just drill down and, and listening, listening, listening. I know I keep saying that, but it's so, so, so key um, to really consult with them and figure out what their, their points are. And through that, that's going to help you build trust with them. That's going to help them connect with you because I don't know if you guys have ever had a conversation with somebody where it's been so one-sided, all about the other person. They kind of talked at you, maybe even sold to you about their product. And at the end of the day, you're like, I don't have any need for uh, press on nails. I get, you know, I don't even have nails, you know, <laughs> you know, something like that. Like there's, you want to truly understand their needs. So you are not selling them the complete wrong solution to what their true problem is in their life. And I'm telling you what guys, most people are unfulfilled. Um, there is something missing for most people. And so that is a huge driver in this. Um, and so not only that, you want to help them, you want to connect with them from this perspective too. You want to verbalize to them that you recognize the fact that Plexus might not be the right fit for them. That puts the, that changes the entire tone of the whole rest of the conversation. Because if I'm sitting here saying, Plexus is perfect for everybody, Plexus is the best for everybody, that's not believable, right? But if I tell them, and I start that conversation out, I'm like, look, I wanna have this conversation with you because I wanna determine 
for, if Plexus is going to be the best thing for you, but if all, also, if this is going to, you know, if we're a good fit for each other as well, like if you're a good fit for Plexus and it, not everybody is, so that's okay. So that's what I want to help you get out of this conversation. You're showing them the what's in it for them and you're letting them know up front, that's okay. This might not be for you. You guys, that changes the feeling about the conversation that puts them in the state of like, Oh yeah. Okay. So she's determining whether or not she wants me on her team and I'm determining whether or not I want to be on her team, you know, and that is such a different, different style of conversation. So really you don't want to use scripts for this. You don't want to use little gimmicks or anything like that. You really truly want to get to know the person and just your whole goal is to put them at ease and to show them and, and the more, um, I guess, nervous or scared or desperate is probably the word I was looking for that you are about this, the more you're going to kind of push that other person away. So if you're constantly going for that hard close and going for that um, hard yes before you've even had all the um, full on conversation, they're going to back away so quickly. But if you are building connection after connection with them and showing them how easy this is and what it will do for them in particular, showing them all the different aspects that this will change their life and be the solution that they're looking for, you're not going to end up having it close. It's going to be done for you in the beginning. And that's truly what we're after. We're not in here for that hard close. Now, don't get me wrong. We're going to talk about asking for the sale and that type of thing as well. But you're setting it up in the front end to not have to close on the back end. You're setting it up so it's a natural conversation. The natural next step is, yes, we've come to the conclusion that this is the greatest solution for you. We've come to the conclusion that this is what you're looking for. And so it's, it's truly the prospect and the person that you're talking to, you need them to feel like they need this and that they want it and, and vice versa. Like you, you want them, you want them to feel love from you and to feel belief coming from you as well. And that's the other aspect of this. So as you're going through the, this process, keep it really, really simple. But think about the things that make you feel good when you walk away with the, from the conversation with somebody. You want belief in you. So if I'm talking to Amy and I'm talking to her about this opportunity, this plexus opportunity, if she's telling me no, if she's giving me objections, like time objections or price objections or anything like that, it's more than likely not the actual objection that she's bringing forward to me that is her real hesitation. Her real hesitation is actually belief in herself that she can do this. Whether that is, say, say she's in this for the weight loss, right? It's belief in herself that she's gonna be able to stick to this plan or it's belief in herself that she's gonna be able to be successful in Plexus as a business. And so you need to breathe belief into her whether based on her goals. So whatever those goals are, you want to show her time and time again, Amy, we're having this conversation because I know that you are gonna have success in these products. We're having this conversation because I know that you're going to be able to find time freedom with your kids and spend more time because you're gonna rock this business. I would not be wasting my time talking to you if I didn't think that. And so making them feel good about themselves and helping them totally walk away from that conversation feeling empowered it's gonna it's gonna bring that decision to an easy yes an easy okay what are the next steps and as you walk them through that process too you want to show them what those next steps are and do that we'll talk about this in a little bit too but you want to start closing to their goals so here's where that kind of that mentality the compassionate close and everything like that comes in but you actually have things that you um specific things that you want to say you always want to write down that list of goals that you had in the beginning part of that conversation and make sure that you are closing to those goals so say she's in this for weight loss say she also wants to have have some more um, time with Adelaide. That's what I'm going to remind her of when we're talking through the close. Um, and this, you know, remind her that this is an opportunity for time freedom. So when she's saying no to this, she's saying no to the possibility of everything that she just told me, right? She's not saying no to this purchase. She's saying no to her weight loss, or she's saying no to finding relief from the pain that she was after. And that's fine too. We don't want to chastise people for saying no. Saying no is okay because generally speaking, 
it's just not the right time for them and that's okay too. We don't wanna ever make people walk away from a conversation when they said no thank you and we made them feel awful for saying no thank you, right? Because it's probably not the end time that you're gonna talk, it's not the last time, sorry, that you're gonna talk to them. It is just a time that they have said this and I, I can't tell you how many people I've had come back to me months later and say, I'm ready, okay, I'm all in, blah, blah, blah was going on in life before, but now I am ready to run with this. Or now I am ready to um, commit to healthy eating and the meal plan and what have you. So um, definitely, and one of the trial closes that you can do with this compassionate closing approach too, is um, walking them, offering to start walking them through and showing them the next steps. Because if they don't know what the next steps involve, like how would I even sign up as an ambassador? How would I even sign up as a customer? If they've built up this little scenario in their head that it's super complicated and hard to get started, you can start walking them through that already. And I'll cover this more when we talk about price objections in a little bit. But one of the biggest things that you're going to hear in this particular scenario is, and, and when you're closing and that sort of thing, is the price objection. And a lot of times that's truly, truly just fear. It's fear that they can't do this. It's not a true price objection. And so what I love to do in those scenarios is to start them on that training process right then. So you say something like, okay, if the price issue wasn't there, Amy, would you be willing to would you be saying yes to me right now? If if price was not your object or your objection, would you be saying yes to me right now and signing up? If the answer to that is absolutely, then you say, why don't we start training right now? I'm going to tell you a little bit about a couple things that you can do. And you guys, we're not talking like training them like they're a new ambassador, but we're going to talk to them about just a couple things that they can think through. Okay, think about three people that you, you know, would want to do this with you. Just get them in that mindset of like, this is all it's going to be. All you're going to have to do is maybe make a post and say, hey, I'm thinking about trying Plexus. Has anybody else tried it on your newsfeed and see what happens? You just step like that. Get them through those for that fear, that initial fear, and then show them how easy it is to just sign up that part. So we're going to go through a bunch more um, information on objections and different things like that. But Amy's going to walk us through a couple different um, top tips to think about when closing as well. Yeah. So, hey guys. Okay. Um, you know, closing with compassion, everything Sarah talked about, you definitely need to keep that at the forefront, but it doesn't mean that you don't go boldly for that sale. Right. I mean, on one hand, you can't approach people as if your business depends on it. I think that's what Sarah was talking about. Like you cannot be desperate for that sale. And certainly sometimes guys, when you're pushing for that check at convention or you're pushing for that planner, um, sometimes that desperation can come across, right? So you definitely want to always lead with that impact on how you can impact that person. It doesn't mean you don't go boldly for the sale. Because you are coming from that place of compassion, because you are coming from that place of how can I impact that person, that should be even more reason on why you should be bold. And I would say that's why you have to be bold in going for the clothes because how can you not want someone on these products, right? When you know what you have can help them, how can you not want someone to have this opportunity when you know what we have can impact them so profoundly? So that's how boldly you should be sharing Plexus and how boldly you should be going for the clothes. So often, I will have ambassadors, you know, tell me like, oh my gosh, Amy, I've been going back and forth with this person for months and I just cannot close it. And when, when I say, okay, well, send me some screenshots, they're not boldly going for the close. They are letting the other person run the conversation and guide the conversation. And they are not bold in closing of the sale. So we're going to give you guys some tips on what that means, right? And when I say bold, I like to put in there that I don't mean extroverted because a lot of times when people think I say you have to be bold in something, you have to kind of be in your face and extroverted and, you know, really lay into it. And that's not what I mean. I mean, you have to be bold in your belief in yourself in the products in the company and the opportunity, all four of those. If you are not 
bold in your belief in those four, you will not be successful. But any personality type can be bold in those, right? I want you to think about the last time you bought something from someone, okay? I bet it wasn't the kiosk guy at the mall, right? Like we avoid those guys like the plague, the ones that are handing the little soaps. You're like, no, don't make eye contact. So think about the last time you bought something from someone. The person was most likely super friendly and interested in you, but they were confident and bold in what they were selling so much so that you bought it, right? So the first tip that I have in um, being bold in your sale, which actually to me, I think closing, how you close actually be, begins from the moment you reach out to somebody. I think how you close is determined from how you reach out. Um, so if you keep that impact in mind, I think your close is going to come a lot easier, but you always want to use positive language. That's the first tip. Always use positive language, right? Don't be wishy-washy. Okay. Be confident, be convicted in your belief that you know, these products are going to help them. You know that this opportunity is what they need. Um, so don't be wishy-washy. Don't say things like, you know, you might like it. I don't know if you, you could try it and, and just see, right? I wouldn't buy something from somebody like that. When I got on the phone with Sarah, after I had avoided her calls for like nine days, when I got on the phone with her, I was a super skeptic, right? And she was a stranger. I had zero relationship with her. So there was no alliance with her at all, right? If she had gotten on the phone with me and said, well, you know, I don't know. You might like it. You could try it. Maybe, you know, it sounds like it could be for you. I'd have been like, no, thanks. But she was bold in her belief in how it could help me and in how much I needed it. Right. But she wasn't pushy. She listened to me. But the minute she heard some things, that's when she came with being bold and how it could help me. So that's the first tip. Use that positive language and don't be wishy-washy. The second one though is, always assume the sale. And a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, Amy, that sounds so salesy, but I don't know any other way to say it, right? You want to use language when you're speaking to people as if you know they are going to order it and they're going to love it. Okay. So don't say things like, you know, well, let me know if you're interested or let me know if you're going to order. No, say things like you are going to love it. I can't wait for you to get started. When you place your order, I'm gonna send you an email, right? Use positive language. That confidence comes across from you and those are the things that are gonna make people also want to try Plexus, right? So oftentimes when people, when I see their conversations and yeah, they've, they've laid it out. I've even seen lots of conversations where the person's interested, they've kind of laid it out they talk back and forth on how it can help them and then nothing happens, right? And I think oftentimes it's because they're not bold in that you're going to love this. I can't wait for you to get started. Use that um, positive language and always assume the sale that not only are they going to order it, but they're going to love it. I even throw in, um, when I talk about the money back guarantee, I'll tell people like, hey, that's what got me to try it. It's a money back guarantee, but you're not going to need it because you're going to love it. Like, I don't even put it into their head that they may even use it, right? So always assume the sale and always assume that they're going to love it. Um, Sarah has got two more tips on being bold in your clothes. Yes. And one of the big things too, with being bold, you have to be bold in your intentions. Mm -hmm. Um, be like your confidence and your intentions are where, where it's going to drive that boldness, right? Your intention is to help make them feel better or whatever their goals are. Right. So your intentions are tied to their goals and you have nothing to lose by helping them then, right? Your intentions are not tied to your own success. So that really helps the driving force of the boldness. When I'm talking to Amy, I'm bold because I know what I have is gonna help her, right? I'm not there because I was trying to make a sale that day. I called her because I knew she had a need. Over and over and over again, I may have called her, but I called her because she had a need. Well, and if I say no, She's working her business. She's got the next person she talks to and the next person. That's where if you constantly have people and you detach, you're like, okay, who can I help next? 
Exactly. Exactly. So um, I think that, that that's a big part of the mentality of being bold too. So it, like she said, I love what she said about it not being about being an extrovert because you can be bold in your conviction that you're going to help this person, right? So the other thing is um, I always, that this is a huge point in being bold, lead the conversation. You control the pace, you control the flow, and you can control where it's going via your questions. So get smart in asking those questions. Get smart in leading them to where you want them to go, right? So if you're asking them a whole bunch of questions about the products and that sort of thing, or asking them questions about how they're, what they're thinking about the products, every, every single question that you ask, you always end, or every single conversation that you have with them, you always end with a, a question. So there's always, there's no room for the conversation to just die out, right? You're setting the follow-up, you're setting the tone, and you're setting the pace. And then you go in for those trial closes as well. So it, you lead it with questions. You lead it with, you know, how, where this is going. You see the end result before, you know, they get there. And then the other thing is to, um, you need to control the, the pace. I said that, but with questions as well. So you control the follow-up. So you always say, okay, if I would you, if I do this, would you do this, right? If I send you this testimony, because maybe they have a question about whether or not it's going to help with their thyroid issue. If I send you this testimony, testimony of my friend Amy, will you watch it tonight? I'll check in with you tomorrow morning. You know, and you're setting that pace. You're not leaving it open-ended to follow up with them next week, right? You are telling them I'm following up with you tomorrow, tomorrow morning. And success loves speed, speed that process along. You're control, in control of that pace right there. So now I want to move on a little bit to the objections that we commonly see. So objections are a really big part of this business. And I don't want you guys to be afraid of objections. Objections simply mean that the person is thinking this through. Um, and you cannot take objections at face value because sometimes somebody will bring something up and it's not actually a que an objection. It's more of a question, but we can take it as an objection. Like, oh, they don't, they don't want to hear, you know, they don't want what we have to offer when truly they are just inquiring about the product a little bit further. They're truly just asking a little bit further. So not every objection that we're, we're so quick to get scared over is a true objection. It's more just an you know, they're inquisitive. They're trying to figure out what's going on with this opportunity, what's going on with these products, and they're asking questions. Questions are our friend. That means it's rolling through their mind, and it's okay to be skeptical. I don't know very many people that aren't, right? That we're wired that way. We're wired to, to question things. We're not wired to just blindly trust all people, right? Or all opportunities or all products. We should ask questions. That's a smart thing to do. So allow them to go down that road and, and make them feel smart for asking those questions. I always tell everybody, thank you for asking. Thank you for caring enough to ask about this, right? And so as you're going through those objections, one of the most common ones we get straight off the bat is somebody comes to us and they say, hey, um, so how much is Plexus? And they're asking about price right away. In our head, we can all, we all kind of automatically assume, oh my gosh, okay, so they're price minded. That is an objection. They're going to think this is too expensive. They just don't know what to ask you guys. They don't know which line of questioning they should be going down. And it, asking about price is not a cost objection. That is simply asking about price. So what you've got to do at that point, this is where you control the conversation and you steer it around that. Because you honestly, it's not a tactic. You truly cannot give them a price on what, something you don't even know what you're selling them to. You know, you don't even know if you're selling them triplex or if you're selling them an ambassador uh, welcome pack. So um, at that point in time, you've got to be like, you know what? I would love to quote you on price and I absolutely will. But right now I've got to figure out what I'm even quoting you on. I don't know what products that we're talking about yet or what, it, or whether or not we're talking about the opportunity, what have you. So can I ask you a couple questions before we get to the price, but I promise we'll get there. Um, and so just putting them at a ease and, and understanding and acknowledging that that question is valid. Yes, we all do want to know what the price is of these products, but you have to understand you can't give that to them quite yet. And the next one is the cost objection. So this is where they are saying you've quoted them a price on everything that you have just given them and you're quoting them a price and they're like, 
oh man, okay, I think that that's too much. Like I said earlier, that objection right there is 99.9% .9 of the time, not the actual objection. Cost is an easy one. You know, the price of things is an easy one where they think that you'll automatically back down. But really, it's their own belief in their own head about themselves being successful on these products or being successful in this opportunity. It's not even anything to do with the actual um, price of the products. It also could be the perceived value of the products that you gave them and you kind of, if it's happening a whole bunch to you, you really do need to examine how you're talking to people about Plexus, how many questions you're asking, how are you selling Plexus to them? Because if they don't see the solution that you're bringing to their life, it might seem too expensive, right? And if that's happening over and over and over again, it's okay to reevaluate your process, send screenshots to your upline, that sort of thing. But if you're full on getting a price objection like that, you gotta keep, you gotta start digging. So you bring up their goals again. You bring up their um, desire for weight loss, their desire to, um, spend some more time with their children and to make some more income, you know, from this. So you bring up, you remind, remind them of their goals again and say, you know, I know I, I feel, use that feel, sorry, I, my words are jumping all over themselves because I'm so excited, right? <laughs> so you use the feel felt found method where, you know, yes, I used to feel that way, but here's what I found, right? And you talk to them a little bit about, you know, well, th these goals that you had are super important. And so I want to help you reach your goal of weight loss. I want to help you reach your goal of, um, you know, staying home with your kids. And so those things, this is how we're going to accomplish that. You remind them of what these products are going to do for them for their specific goals right then. And if they still say, I know it's just too, too much. You guys, sometimes that is an actual objection. Sometimes it is an actual cost objection. So there's two different ways that I like to go about it right then. Number one, I like to say, okay, if cost wasn't an object to you, would you be signing up right now for what we just talked about? If they say yes, you've probably got yourself a true cost objection. So then what you go from there is you chart, you do that trial um, training that we talked about earlier. And number two, and this is what I love, or actually there's three options right here. Number two option is to say, okay, what is your budget? That's a very valid question, you guys. Don't be afraid of that. Not everybody has to start on all the products you just recommended. And maybe you just recommended something that they had no idea it was gonna cost this much. They desperately want it, but they truly can't afford it right now, right? So dialing it back to just ProBio5 and BioCleanse or just Slim or just X Factor or just Kids X Factor or just Edge, whatever that looks like for them, whatever their budget is, lay it out one by one. I like to say, this is why I recommended the Slim. This is why I recommend the ProBio5. This is why I recommended BioCleanse, blah, 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 blah and put the explanation based on their goals there. That way they can look through and be like, I this is the, the cost of each of them, let's work out a solution for you based on your budget. And we take it from there and they determine what they can purchase at that point in time, right? And so the beauty of that is that they're gonna be purchasing something and starting something. They're gonna be doing something with you um, because they are expressing interest. You've explained this all out, how it's gonna be a solution to them. They're gonna start on something and it's okay to start on one product. They don't have to start on the whole shebang, right? And so then the other thing is too, you guys talk to them about the opportunity here. Talk to them about the ambassador opportunity and what truly realistically it would take for them to sign up as an ambassador and to make enough to where this is affordable, affordable to them on a monthly basis. They first, anybody that you're talking to right now, anybody, their first little thought is, how can I make my money back, my initial investment? How can I make that initial investment back? They're not thinking $10,000. They're thinking, how can I make my $124 investment back right now, right? So that's the basic, you know, just behind, behind, ah, behind the price and the cost objection. I'm going to kick it back over to Amy. Yeah. So, you know, one thing I was thinking of when you were talking is that a lot of these objections actually are not on the person, but they're from us. Right? Like when you had said some people are so afraid to talk about price or they're so afraid to ask about their budget or they're so afraid to ask certain questions. Um, those are, if that's you, then that is your own internal, you have not built your belief, right? 
because if I was thinking about it, like my realtor, she wasn't afraid to talk about price. My photographer, she wasn't afraid to go over packages, right? When you have kind of that doubt in your head, that I think is where that hesita hesitation comes from. And you know, one time when I first started, it may have been you, Sarah, that said it, but somebody told me when talking about Plexus to someone, they don't know what they should be asking you. They don't know that right away, they should not be asking you what the price is, they should be asking you, how can this help me? So it's up to us to lead that conversation, you know? And I was thinking too, I'm gonna to get to my objection, I promise, but I was thinking, you know, I've had people send me a message and be like, oh my gosh, Amy, somebody asked me how they can buy it. And I'm like, okay, uh, send them your website. And they're like, oh my gosh, yeah. I was thinking that they had an objection and they like, were like not sure if they could buy it and they were asking me and I don't think I want to tell them I sell it. And I'm like, whoa, get out of your own head. Or someone will come to me and they'll be like, Amy, you know, somebody asked me how much ProBio is. I don't know what to tell them. I'm like, well, you know, let's, so a lot of times guys, that is on ourself. So, um, one of the big things about it, something right there yeah, too, jump in there. Those, any sort of doubt that you have, any sort of hesitation that you have that it's like a dance back and forth they automatically will back up with that like they that breeds doubt quicker than anything else you can do so yeah. that conviction is so big there sorry go yeah. ahead well and you don't have to know everything about all the products that's not what we're saying when we're talking about that doubt right it's in your own kind of boldness and conviction so one thing i like to talk about briefly when we're talking about overcoming objections um because a lot of times people are like well i want to overcome objections but i don't know all the things there's this thing that we talk about in Plexus. We haven't talked about it in a while, but it's called the shield of confidence. And basically, it's what you fall back on when someone gives you an objection and you're new and you're not sure. All you have to remember is our money back guarantee, your own experience with the products, right? Like no one can take away your truth, the incredible growth of our company, the successes of all the people on the team, we have all the clinical studies, but then also the testimonies of real people. And if you can just get two testimonies and know them, um, those are the things that when you do have these objections in your mind, you can fall back on that shield of confidence and you won't do that kind of doubtful dance Sarah was talking about. Right? So one of the biggest objections that I get pretty often, and I think it's because I, we are just in a circle of friends that are pretty active and healthy anyway is, I already, I'm just going to eat healthy and work out, right? That's a, that's an objection that you get. And oftentimes when you get that, you want to be like, great. Or when you're such a plexus person, sometimes you want to be like, well, that ain't going to work, right? Like you want to, but we can't. So my favorite way to overcome this objection, and I'm sure there are many, my favorite way on this particular one is to use the feel felt found method, right? And that's where you say, well, oh my goodness, you know what? I, I felt that way too, but what I found was X. So when somebody tells me I'm just gonna eat healthy and work out, I actually tell them, that's awesome. I'm like, we want people who use Plexus to eat healthy and work out. We are not a diet. We are all about being the healthiest version of you. But I also used to think that all I needed to do was eat healthy and work out. And I gotta be honest with you, girl, I still had sleep problems. I still had insomnia. Um, my thyroid was still out of whack. I was still living on caffeine. And every time I tried to eat healthy, the sugar monster was out of control. And that's what Plexus has done for me. So, um, and then you can even say, does any of that sound familiar to you, right? You always want to kind of, like Sarah said, um, end with that question. Because if I had just left it at that and said, this is what I found and that's it, there's no reason for that person to come back to my message, right? They've said their piece, I've said mine, done. So you want to always keep following up. So that is how I would have taken um, that objection that we get pretty often of, I'm just gonna eat healthy and work out. No problem. So it's, are you doing the next one? Yeah, so one of the other ones that we always tend to, <laughs> tend to get is that they already are taking something. They're already taking a diet pill or they're already taking a vitamin or that kind of thing. So I, this is where I love to use the 60 day money back guarantee, you guys. Um, they're essentially trying it for free. And if they're having the conversation with you, 
more than likely whatever they're taking isn't providing a hundred percent depends on how the conversation came about but it, more than likely what's happening is they are not getting a hundred percent of the benefit that they want to get out of that product not only that they may have put plexus in a box they may, may have put plexus in a box of weight loss or of um whatever they think plexus is so that's an opportunity to say okay awesome what do you take what do you, what it, types of products you take you can either offer them offer to switch them out for them for a month and explain the differences between the two of them um and i don't ever like to um take any other product down or, or talk bad about it especially if they're currently using it but what i do like to do is sell the is talk to them about what plexus is you know great at so whatever um our product excels in is what i like to to talk about there but i love using the 60 day, 60 day money back guarantee because i'm like just try it for 60 days if you don't love it if you want to go back to your old product then let's go ahead and get you a refund so you'll basically get 60 days of products for free if you don't love it and if you don't want to switch for good right and so that's kind of how i always handle that one and a lot of times they it, it simply is they don't realize the the benefit above what our products have over theirs and then the other one is um that <laughs> everybody has tried all the things they've tried all the diets they've tried all the slim fast shakes and the diet pills and everything like that they don't want to try one more thing and so for that one i always am like look I can tell you testimony after testimony after testimony. I want nothing more, and this is where their goals really come into play with both of these. I want nothing more than for you to get your ultimate goal of weight loss that you haven't found before. I was a diet junkie. I tried everything under the sun. And if you guys, if this is not your story, then you can talk about other people, you know, in, in the team. But I was a diet junkie. I've tried everything under the sun. And what I found is that there is a huge benefit to healing your body from the inside out and these products are different they work different than anything else on the market and you are going to have a very different experience because they are working with your body to heal it and allow your body to do what it was naturally supposed to be doing anyway before uh we you know came in and junked it all up but you know it, it's what if this is the last thing that you have to try if it's not we have a guarantee on every order Yes. that is a huge huge fallback and i love to use testimonies in those instances that third party tool right there is a huge huge belief builder because they are not believing in themselves right then that is where this hesitation lies they have done you know they've done their research they've done all these other things they don't believe that they can be successful with plexus so you have to pour belief into them that yes they will be successful in plexus and here's why mm -hmm. yeah and you know one of the other biggest um objections you can get and this is really not so much about the products um is time right so i'm too busy and every once in a while excuse me <laughs> you i guess you can sometimes get that for a product and i'm kind of thinking of the times where you'll get somebody who says oh well you know i'm too busy traveling with work to start the products or i'm going on vacation right or so if that's the case if it is a time objection because they think for whatever reason plexus is a diet and they can only start it on a monday or they can't do it on vacation oftentimes i'll just ask them why they think that i'll be like oh my goodness you are going to feel so much better once you start why do you think you can't start right now Right, and then just get that conversation going. It is okay to ask these things. And then I will tell them, the great thing about Plexus is that it's easy. You literally can take it with you anywhere. It's not something that you can only start on a Monday, or it's not something that you can't have while you're on vacation, or maybe you're eating a little bit um, not as healthy and you're drinking a little bit more. That's when I tell them, that's when you need Plexus, right? So, but the I'm too busy objection typically comes when we're talking about the business right i'm too busy and there are a few things you can we can talk about to overcome that objection and it kind of depends on the context of uh, the conversation you're having with the person if you watched how to recruit our a player call um you'll want to have that conversation remember we talked about how you can increase their time without sacrificing their lifestyle and you need to um um, look at look to be their consultant 
and how you are going to kind of leverage their network, but you're going to kind of do the work in the beginning. So if it's an A player and they give you that I'm too busy objection, you want to go back to that that we talked about during that um, conversation. What I like to do though, when somebody says I was too busy, I just tell them, well, one, I love that you're busy because then I know you're not going to waste your time, right? Because you don't have a lot of time to waste. If I send you this, would you do this? It's a great way to either get them to see one of those third party tools, because here's the thing, they don't have a lot of time. You don't want to show them that you're spending all of this time on them, right? This is a great way to show them a third party tool. It shows that we already have stuff loaded and ready and ask them if they can take five minutes to watch it and get back to you. Another way I overcome this objection is I tell them, you know, I actually thought that too, that I did not have any more time. And I said, quite honestly, I didn't. And I may talk to them about how I had the commute and I only had a couple hours at home at night. But that's exactly why I needed this opportunity because I needed to be able to take my time back. And then I'll ask them if that is something that interests them, if that is something that they could see themselves you know, wanting or getting a couple hours back in their evening if Plexus could do that for them. And when they say they don't have time, they're so busy, they need the time. Um, and then of course, you know, you don't want to gloss it over and make it feel like literally you're gonna make $20,000 a month um, by working this 15 minutes a day, two days a week, right? But I will tell them that, look, I didn't have a lot of time in the beginning. Um, like I said, I was working full time, had the commute. But what I did was I worked it a few minutes a day, either after Adelaide went to bed from my phone or on my lunch hour. And you could do the same thing too. So, you, you know, there's a couple of different ways to overcome that time objection. Usually though, it's not that they don't, have the time or won't make the time, it's that they don't understand what goes into it. They don't understand what we do, right? And they might think that it's so much work that they really don't have time for it. So a lot of times to overcome that objection, it is really to just show them what we do and show them how simple it really is, right? And it's also super imperative to just get to know their goals through that so that you can say they're not, they're you don't have time to do X, Y, Z, or, you know, you're saying no to this. You're not actually saying no to this opportunity. You're not saying no to Plexus. You're saying no to time freedom. You're saying no to, um, you know, financial freedom or that financial margin you're looking at, whatever that is. Right. Right. Then, and you know, we get this objection too with people on our team. This is not just a potential, right? So this is another one, um, that you may have to overcome this objection with people on your team. They're like, well, I'm just too busy. Right. Um, so that's where, like Sarah was saying, take it back to what their goals are. So the big, big one that you get when you're a new ambassador, I mean, I get it now sometimes too, but it doesn't phase me. When you're kind of new to the business, it freaks you out. It's when somebody tells you it's a scam or it's a pyramid scheme, right? Like those are the ones that people, I remember the first time someone told me, I like, you know, get like the knots in my stomach. I was like, cool, right? <laughs> this is a big objection. This is where that boldness in your belief comes in, guys. You need to have that belief in our company, but also in the industry of network marketing. Because if you don't, when you get hit with that objection, you're gonna curl back and that self-doubt dance, I love that you did that, Sarah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that. That self-doubt dance, right? It's just gonna fuel whatever their objection is. Now, a couple things I wanna say about the scam or the pyramid. Always assume positive intent with people, okay? When, when you're talking about Plexus and they give you an objection, always assume positive intent. I think we are quick to assume someone's being negative and that's just gonna hurt us. That's gonna hurt the conversation. And I see this often with not only the price, but also with it's a scam or it's a pyramid. Don't assume that person's being mean. I thought the same thing because I honestly did not know, right? So assume positive intent when you get that. And what I like to do to overcome it is I kind of laugh it off and I'd be like, oh my goodness, girl, I would never be involved in a scam. Why do you think it is one? 
right? You, or if they say it's a pyramid scheme, oh my goodness, I would never be involved in something illegal like a pyramid scheme. Why do you think it is one? And then you quite often stop them in their tracks because they don't know why they said that, right? They just think all network marketing is a scam or something they've heard. So when you ask that, then that opens up that conversation. That's when you can say, oh my goodness, girl, no, you know, we are online shopping for the best supplements that you can get on the market. That's what we are. Or no, we are an incredible, legitimate work from home opportunity. Um, and then you take the conversation from there. So do not be afraid of the, it's a scam, it's a pyramid scheme, guys, because guess what? It's not. Like, they can say that all they want. We know it's not. Um, and I think oftentimes we get this from family members. Um, I know I hear from a lot of people on my team that when they get this, it's from a family member. They think they're looking out for you. You know, they don't want you involved in something. But I often find if you either turn it back on them and ask them why, they're not going to know. Or if they do give you something back, then to overcome it, you can just say you would never be involved in it. They're actually illegal. And then you can say Plexus Worldwide, you know, have a couple of um, company stats in your back pocket that we're debt free. We're all in, you know, the fastest growing businesses list. Um, and I don't know, something else. I always can... rely on the um, income graph too, because I mean, for, just from that, I mean, it, ambassador yeah. that has nobody underneath them is making money, you know, on right. that graph. Right. Um, and I loved what Amy said. I think the single best way to handle this objection is to ask them why they think that because everybody's de definition of a scam or a pyramid scheme is so different. Mm -hmm. Um, it is, and I have heard <laughs> everything in the book as to what a pyramid scheme actually is. And I'm like, well, let me tell you the actual definition of what a pyramid scheme is. You know, I tell them and then, <clears throat> which in case you guys don't know, a pyramid scheme is where no, no bill, no goods change hands. So you pay money into something, you don't get anything in return. So no product, nothing like that. And it just goes up to pay the people above you and you never get any return on your investment. So that's obviously, I mean, we sell products. That's flat out not what it is. But what a lot of times, and I'm sorry, I'm kind of like hijacking this. I mean, a lot of times what I hear the objection is that people give, and I want to correct this way of overcoming this objection because it's just not the most ideal way to handle it, is when people say, oh, you know, that's a pyramid scheme. I don't want anything like, no, this isn't a pyramid scheme. Those are illegal. And they leave it at that. They don't take it to where Amy says, you guys, anybody could, we could be doing something illegal, right? So that's not like the way to squash that. You need to take it steps further. And just because something is illegal does not mean it's not happening. There are schemes actually all over the place. Um, my husband was a financial advisor. They do happen. And so um, that's a big thing. You, you've got to take it a step further than that. Right. Sorry. You know, and one that, no, you're okay. And one that kind of goes along with that is, well, are, do you make any money at this? And oftentimes, I think it's people's own insecurity in their business. They think they're not a jewel and they don't have the car. So they can't tell people, yes, you make great money at this. And that's silly, guys. Like, one, the fact that we get paid five times a month or we have the opportunity to get paid five times a month is huge. Like Sarah said, on the chart, if you have one person, you're making like $300 a year. And if you have made 25 cents with Plexus, that's more than the person you're talking to is getting paid. They don't need to know your check was a quarter or they don't need to know your check was 20 grand, right? They do not let your own feelings about, oh, I'm not a jewel. I don't have, you know, I'm not making a ton of money diminish the fact that you can get paid doing this and that it is a legitimate work from home, work from anywhere opportunity. Absolutely. Um, and I will tell you guys, I still, to this day, I don't sell on my diamond paycheck unless somebody is explicitly and very directly asking me. I still sell ba our current plan based on what I made my very first month. That yeah. is how I continuously sell this. And you can, you guys, if you, like she said, if you're making any money at all, you're winning at this because most people think nobody can make any money at this. And we will share like our paycheck. I mean, you guys have your first month paycheck. I do the same thing because nobody believes me when I show them this paycheck or they think you're one of a million or 
it sometimes can give the illusion that you can make the money quickly. And that's not what we want, right? Like we want them to know it's an opportunity, but it's not a lottery ticket. So those silver, those gold checks, Sarah sold me on her Ruby check. Like that's what sold me to draw my line in the sand to get out of my job. Um, and so, yeah, that's a great point. Like we actually, we have the jewel paychecks and we don't use them. Right. All right. Is that, I think that's all we have for today. Yeah, I'm trying to check. Yay, everybody's loving it. I'm loving all the feedback. Yay. Yay, all right. Bye, guys. Yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Um, I'm not, we're still lining out the May, um, you know, calendar of events and that kind of thing. So just be watching the 30-day page for that, and we'll um, let you guys know what we're what our plans are for May. We were supposed to do that today, but we did not. So, <laughs> um, but we'll see you guys soon. Um, keep your eyes on this page for some great new info. Bye. Bye.